Okay, as a review from Friday, uh, Friday, uh, just real quick, we, we started talking about uh, the beginning phases of a, sh of a strike uh, within uh, for a soccer athlete when he or she uh, begins the phase of striking a ball in a game. So we took an athlete, a female athlete, and um, initially we started off with the initial phase of her windup. And then we, we basically pushed through to the second phase, which was hip flexion. Well, this was hip extension, knee extension. Then we went hip extension, knee flexion. Then we proceeded to more hip flexion and then more knee flexion. So uh, coming out of hip, hip extension, going into hip flexion with uh, subsequent uh, knee flexion still being similar than uh, the previous picture here. So similar knee flexion compared to here but the hip is, is beginning to transition anteriorly in order for her to, sh to place a strike on the ball. Then we transition through the uh, initial phase of her, or actually I should say pre, we'll call it pre-strike, where now the hip is still moving a bit into flexion, and then the knee is pushing into more extension in order for her to place a strike on the ball with her foot. And then we transition through the striking of the ball just after she strikes it. And you can see how the knee begins to extend fully. So it goes from a partially flexed position to a almost completely extended position. Um, so we will continue to and then uh, obviously before that i we moved on to the next phase which was f full extension of the knee just about and then even more hip flexion in order for her to get uh, the ball to where she needed to go and then obviously to initiate more power on it um, we were going to talk today about how it how the athlete needs to transition from a fully extended knee to, to a partially flexed knee with more flexion of the hip in order to get the ball, in order to create more power for that particular, uh, that particular strike. Okay, so going from, again, we're going to, um, introducing it, going from a fully extended knee and a, as, as much of a flexed hip as she can possibly get to, to actually a flexed knee in order to allow her to get to even more of a flexed hip in order to generate more power. Um, and then we'll transition into also how she goes from um, a partially flexed, uh, even a more flexed, a partially, even a more flexed hip with the flex knee to it being her peak, okay, to it being her peak of the movement before she begins to transition down and back to the ground. Okay, so going from a partially, uh, a fully flexed hip to a, uh, or a, I'm sorry, a fully extended knee to a partially flexed hip, then to a partially flexed knee, and even a more of a flexed hip. And then we have even more flexed of a hip here. And then it be, that's the peak. And then it begins to start to, the hip begins to start to extend and the knee continues to flex, but this is her descent down to the ground. So she's still ascending you can see her still ascending up to the up in the air. She this is her peak, and then she begins to start to descend uh, at that point, right there. Okay, so we're gonna I'll break it down a bit more to make it more uh, uh, understandable. So, um, 
moving on. So again, going through the slides just very quickly, hip extension, knee extension, initial phase of cocking her leg back to strike the ball in the windup, a partially flexed knee in order to begin to strike the ball. We spoke about how the um, quadricep needs to stretch in order for the, the hamstring to do its work, to, to flex the knee, because we know the hamstring flexes the knee, and the quadricep allows that to happen uh, with the fully stretched, stretched quadricep, and how the similarities are, are present in somebody who is stretching the, the quadricep compared to an athlete who is actively engaging her hamstring to flex the knee and extend the hip but still needs the quadricep to stretch on command in order for that strike to occur appropriately. So again, comparing the similarities of a partially of somebody flexing or stretching the, the quadricep by flexing the knee and then an athlete actively moving herself through the range of motion. Um, we talked about how the, the hip has a certain uh, range of motion here, the first picture, hip extension. Second picture moves into hip flexion. And as we see the transition of the ball or the knee and the foot approximating or moving toward the ball in order to get closer to that ball in order to strike it correctly. Um, and then again, looking at the a different angle, we'll say, um, of the athlete uh, uh, striking the ball or a different angle of her knee being flexed in a different position of the strike phase and how that 90% or so of knee flexion correlates with somebody actually stretching the athlete's knee on a table uh, where it's very similar uh, in regards to how those uh, pictures and images uh, correlate together uh, again, actively flexing the knee to strike the ball and then somebody uh, passively stretching the knee in order to create flexi excuse me, flexibility uh, on, for the athlete for sport performance. Uh, and then we compared, right? We compared both of them. So we compared image one uh, uh, to image three, for example. Image one and image two correlate together active flexion, passive flexion and stretching, um, and how uh, act, uh, image three and image four is a passive stretching, and an image, uh, image three is a passive stretching, image four is an active uh, stretching of the quadricep, and how uh, both of those um, images, or both of those, well, yeah, we'll say images uh, are very similar. In, in, the, in the motions of the hip and the knee, whereas a hip, um, image three has more hip extension, image four has similar hip extension, image three has very much uh, quite a bit of knee flexion, and then image four has uh, not as much knee flexion um, as uh, image three. Um, talked about the approximation of how the foot approximates toward the ball or closes in toward the ball. Uh, and how this individual needs to be able to have certain amount of hip flexion uh, and knee extension where the hip is flexed uh, uh, quite a bit more and the knee is extended quite a bit more in image two in order for her foot to get closer to the ball in order for her to strike it correctly. Talking about the knee angle as well. And then uh, post strike, right? So we went pre-strike to post strike how now the, the hip and the knee are in a, different, in a different position here where the knee is, is almost fully extended and the hip actually does move on into even more flexion, but not a lot uh, in order to get the ball off of her foot. Again, uh, the quadricep hamstring uh, ratio, uh, the, the change where we have um, pre-strike versus post-strike. Uh, pre-strike, we had some knee flexion still with hip flexion and then post strike uh, it was quite a bit of knee extension and not a lot of hip flexion uh, allowing her to get from pre-strike to post strike with her follow-through uh, moving on 
again, this was uh, an image we showed about the ball moving off of her foot and then now traveling through the air and how she allowed her hip to flex and her knee to extend in order to allow there to be power uh, in order to create power for that ball to, uh, to go where it want, she wanted it to go. Uh, and then again, the difference in hamstring and quadricep strength and how they activate and, and then uh, allow the hip to move through the range of motion from just after she strikes the ball uh, to uh, the next phase where the ball is, is traveling through the air and in and, and hopes that she gen has generated enough power. Um, and then we talked about uh, the stretching of the hamstring um, and how this uh, stretching of the hamstring is very similar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm going to start here, okay? It might be a bit of a review, but I, I, wanna, I wanna go through it a little bit more. So the athlete, we wrote, you know, we wrote, I rotated the pictures down, placed her on her back as if she was being stretched. Um, similar to this picture where this athlete is being stretched. Now, here's the deal. Um, we have 90 degrees of flexion here, right? Of the left leg on this football player. This is 90 degrees of flexion. We hope that a soccer athlete can get 90 degrees of flexion in any particular situation of striking a ball or whatever it might be. However, a lot of times, as I said before, the hamstrings of a soccer player are just not that flexible. It has a lot to do with the sport, the biomechanics of the sport. Right. As, as I said before, the quadriceps, 90 percent of soccer players, probably more if we tested them, 90 percent of soccer players, their quadriceps would be more than they need to be. OK, uh, fully flex, uh, fully flex knee, heel to the butt, but without a problem. But the hamstrings are a different story for soccer players. So we uh, we need to be able to as as athletes or the athletes need to be able to do what they have to do to get that hamstring to become as flexible as possible. Um, and the biomechanics of a sport uh, begin to start to change in order for the, the athlete to get through that full range of motion. And what I mean by this is that this leg of this athlete, uh, the soccer player will go through, it has to bend. Okay, so this is, this is the follow through after she fully extended, right? So here's her extension. So we go through the, the, the full extension of the knee and hip flexion. This next one is the next phase of the follow through. So what she has done is now the hip is still flex. It actually is in more flexion than it was before. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. But now the knee is partially flexed. So the insertion of the hamstring now coming back to its origin. The quadriceps insertion now must travel away from the origin. But she's trying to get more out of the strike, more power. So the hamstring has to continue to, um, the, the quadricep has to continue to do the work. And the hamstring has to continue to be as flexible as possible. So um, if we were to go back to this particular image here. So what I've done here, hamstring stretch, hamstring stretch. And this is, if you can show, if you can see here on the left side, fully extended knee, okay? Fully extended uh, as much as possible. Now she's not even close to 90 degrees. Um, would we like her to get to 90 degrees? It really honestly depends on how, um, how, how long her strike. If she wants to hit a ball 40 to 50 degrees or 40 to 50 yards, uh, we're going to have to get as much flexibility out of the hamstring as possible. Is the, do we need that, that uh, hip and the hamstring to get to this point for her to strike a ball by 40 to 50 yards? We do not. We do not. Um, but, 
we still need more hamstring flexibility than this. This position is not going to get her to be able to strike a ball very well. So if she went from here back down, so if this was her peak, it wouldn't be good enough. So she has to get more peak of her, uh, she has to get more hip flexion. And she ha so she has to get more of a peak uh, of this leg driving superiorly into the air. Um, and so the way she's going to do that, okay, is by flexing her knee. So the flexion of the knee is going to allow the hip to create more flexion. So the flexion of the knee is important because we're going to get more hip flexion out of it if we're able to flex the knee. So again, this isn't going to be good enough. She has to be able to flex the knee in order to, for her to be able to get more power. Um, so here's this, the, the next aspect of it. So if we had an athlete who was laying on her back and let's just say this athlete here and the majority of the soccer players, we could not get them to this 90 degrees of flexibility when we're stretching them. Let's just say that is the truth. That it's, it is the truth. It's, it's not going to happen for the most part. There are rare occasions where we get soccer players that have extreme extremely flexible hamstrings. Um, but a lot of soccer players will not have those. So here's where we're at. Let's just say we have this athlete, we're trying to stretch her, we're trying to stretch her hamstring to allow her to have some more flexibility, whether it's in rehabilitative protocols after some type of injury, or whether it's just stretching to prepare for a match, uh, whether it's some static stretching or some dynamic, whatever, however we'd want to do that. We can actually stretch the hamstring with the flex knee. It actually will allow her to get more flexibility in the hamstring when we flex the knee. So let's just say we go back to this picture here. We're laying her on her back. We're stretching her hamstring. And when we get to this point of stretching her hamstring, she says, it's too, it hurts. I can't go anymore. Can you stop? You need to stop right there. We say, okay. We'll hold here and stretch. After a little while, or even at that point, you can flex the knee like so, and it will automatically allow her uh, al allow for more flexion of the hip in order to allow you to stretch the hamstring further and, and, and even at a larger degree. So the hamstring stretch, the hamstring flexibility is extremely important uh, in order for us to be able to understand that flexion of the hip for a power strike in soccer is extremely important. So we have to have good hamstring flexibility in order to allow the quadricep to do its work. So for her, in this situation, what she's done is she's actually flexed the knee, right? She's flexed the knee in order for her to get more power on her strike which has subsequently allowed for hip flexion to occur. Okay, so if she keeps her legs straight, hip flexion is not going to occur anymore. But because she flexed her knee, hip flexion occurs more. Now, we could say opposite. We could say the hip flexion has gone up so high and we want, she wants to get more hip flexion from here to here. So now because of hip flexion, it automatically flexes the knee to allow hip flexion to occur. So either way you want to look at it in order for you to help you understand it is, is fine. So the athlete must now flex the knee. So the, the, the athlete, you know, must now flex the knee uh, to get more flexion of the hip to improve power. So more knee flexion in image two, which gives more hip flexion. Uh, the hamstring must now begin to shorten. So in the quadricep is now acting on both the hip and the knee, still flexing the hip, but now also relaxes to allow hamstring, the hamstring to flex the knee. So it's a very, very... Um, 
difficult. It's the quadricep has to do a couple things, right? So the, the quads, the quadricep actually has to do, it has to, it has to contract and work. And it also has to relax and, and, and lengthen and stretch. So it has to do two things. It has to be able to contract at the hip in order to flex the hip still for the follow through, but it also must relax in order to allow the knee to flex, to allow the hamstring to flex the knee in order for there to be more, um, more power. Uh, so a, a lot going on with this particular, uh, with this particular aspect of this phase of the, of the follow through. So again, just to review, she has flexed the hip here with an extended knee. She's still rising, so it's still peaking. She still has to get more hip flexion on her follow to on her on her follow through. So at the whole swing phase from the full hip extension to now is still uh, basically transitioning through a complete um, cycle. Okay, a complete cycle to allow power to occur. So here's your hip flexion. Okay, it's, she's still rise. She's still generating power with this strike with her hip flexion. She's, and she's already struck the ball, right? So this is the momentum, basically, right? Momentum from everything from the very beginning of hip extension on image one to now. All right, full momentum that has been generated from the muscles of the quadricep um, generating a lot of hip flexion and knee extension. And now she's coming out of that. So she's still in a, she's still in a, um, a, a, a movement phase in order to uh, generate a uh, power. So here, what I've done is I have, uh, we're, we're going to look here. This is even more. Okay. So this is, this is, if you can see on the, the image to the right, we're still generating power. So she's still going, even the momentum is still has still taken her into more hip flexion compared to here on the image on the right. So we've gone even more into more hip flexion. And then um, you'll find that the, here you'll see, here's the difference, right? Here's the difference. Um, your athlete has even more knee flexion. And hip flexion hasn't changed much, but there's still more flexion in the hip on image two. There's still more flexion in the hip on image two. Um, and even you can tell, as we said on uh, uh, last, last class, is that flexion and extension, right? Flexion is a decrease in angle at the joint. It's the joint closing up. Extension is an increase in angle at the joint. It's the joint opening up. So if we go from... This, this image, this, this part of the cycle, this phase, to the next phase, we'll see image one versus image two. Image two has a, has a, um, uh, a closed angle compared to image one. So if we do the degrees and all that, which we're not going to do just to make sure we're not confusing anybody. But image one, more or less, uh, image one is less flexion the angle is opened up more, which means it's more extension. Okay. Image two, more flexion. The image or the angle has closed up more. So it's, it's closing in. So, uh, you know, again, the hamstrings must shorten. The quadriceps uh, are acting on both the hip and the knee. Still flexing the hip, but again, now also relax to allow the hamstring to flex the knee. So there's quite a bit, of, there's still a, a, a big difference between image one and image two, as she's still generating, she is still coming through her momentum from the power she's generated uh, from image one to now in order to strike the ball correctly. So if I, if I go through, if I go through the, the images, And I take you through, let me go back. And I take you through the entire sequence. Here's image one. Watch the number on her shorts, the 12. 
Watch the number on her shorts, the 12. From picture one to picture three, one to two to three to four, even a little bit, right? But really one to two to three, that 12 is moving toward us. So there is a lot of hip flexion that is going on. So one to two to three, that 12 is, is really transitioning. So there's your hip flexion. It's full hip extension. It's as far, probably as far as she can go hip extension wise um, for her in particular. But we go one, two, three, a lot of hip flexion. And then her knee, it's a, it's a pretty good technique. Her knee is directly over the ball, right? It's, it's directly over the ball, which we want in order for her to, to, to get a good strike on it. Um, and then now look at from image one, two, three. Now from image three to four. And then four to five. There's a lot of knee extension right? A lot of knee extension, not a lot of knee extension. There, there's a lot of knee extension here, but from here to here, there's not a lot of knee movement, right? I mean, it's the, what's hat, what's the, the movement that's occurring is at the hip. So here to here, look, that knee is really not moved a whole lot in terms of the, the angle. There's really not a lot of flexion to extension movement. All the power is being generated through the hip, which is again, quadricep strength and hamstring has to begin to lengthen as we mentioned in the previous image. Um, and then when we get, so that's one, two, three, then we get four to five, four, five. The, the 12 doesn't move a whole lot. It does move from four to five. Sorry, one, two, three. It does move from three to four but it doesn't move a whole lot from four to five. I mean, that 12 is really in the same position from four to five, but from three to four, look at the foot. The foot really does move a lot and the knee is really generating a lot of motion from four to five. So a lot of hip flexion from one to three then we have a lot of knee extension, three to three to four, four to five. And then watch from five to six. One, two, three, four, five. Watch six. Five to six, that 12 is still moving, right? There's, there's a lot of movement still from five to six. The 12 is still rising superior. Now, the foot is moving, but there's the from five to six. There's not a lot of knee extension. As we said earlier, the extension of the knee is very, very minimal, uh, or, or there can be very minimal movement further from extension of the knee because we can only get to zero degrees, right? And so the, the movement here is still is being generated from the hip. Again, you can see the 12. Whoops, hold on. You can see the 12 moving superiorly see from five to six then watch six to seven it's st the the 12 st i'm looking at look at the picture to the sorry look at the picture to the left it's easier to see the picture to the left right so one to two two to three a lot of a lot of movement at the 12. One, two, three. Now four to five, four to five. Not a lot of movement at the 12, but there's a lot of movement at the foot, right? That's creating the knee extension. Then we go from five to six. One, two, three, four, five. Now we go five to six. Still a lot of movement at the 12. The knee can't extend much more. It's zero, it's almost zero degrees here. I think we said like uh, and I'll, I'll explain it again when I get back three, it's like three degrees maybe of extension, four degrees of extension. And then this is like probably two degrees of extension. Um, and then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, five to six, 12 still rising, six to seven, 12 still rising. So we're still getting a lot of hip flexion in this follow through 
that's generated from the momentum of striking the ball, right? And so we're she's still creating power. So six to seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then six, seven and eight, not a lot, right? But what do you see at seven and eight? So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's your hip flexion, knee flexion to generate even more a movement. And then look at seven, eight. There's not a lot, but look at the foot. Okay, so she's still generating more uh, flexion, but now she's at her, I mean, this is really, I could have gone here to there, right? This is, this picture here is really not going to tell us a whole lot. Only that, hold on, let me go back. So from here to here, is it going to tell us a whole lot? But you can look at the picture to the right, okay? If you look at the picture to the right, look at her foot. Look at her foot, okay? It's really close to the ground. So if we're going to analyze this and watch the next picture, it's higher. So it's telling us that she's still generating momentum on that follow through because she's actually jumped off her left foot and it's higher off the ground compared to this image here. So image seven, I think it was, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from seven to eight, she's higher off the ground on eight than she is seven, which is telling us that she still gen has generated momentum and she's still rising for that follow through to get the ball where it needs to go. Um, so seven to eight, now, so if we just cut out eight, right? Let's go from seven to nine. Now you can see, look at the, if you look at the picture to the left, let me go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go from seven to nine. Now she's hit peak. Now she's on her way down. This is her descent, right? So now this is just, this is actually, if you look at the picture to the left, the 12, you can't see as much as the 12. You can see the 12. You can see the 12, 12. You can see the part of the two. You can't see it. That's her peak. Now she's back. Now you can see the two again. She's on her way back down. So her flexion of the knee is no longer involved in the power. It's now ascending uh, her or helping her descend down in order for her to just land properly right so and now we see more of the 12 and now she's gonna kind of fall out of the screen but then she lands okay so it's very important we see we see the we see the 12 we see it coming forward now we see the knees ex the foot's extending now we, now the now the hips generate more power again comes up eight now she's back down again. Okay, so if we were to go back to the angle of the knee here, as I mentioned before, you know, I mean, look at the picture to the right. I mean, it's, it's different than the picture to the left if when we draw the axes. I mean, there's, if I were to measure that, extension of the knee on the left, maybe four degrees, three degrees, if that, four degrees, maybe. Um, and then the picture on the right, two, I mean, one to two degrees, if that, it's very, very minimal, right? So, so she's fully extended in her knee in that particular, uh, in that particular phase. Um, so here's where we have the, uh, uh, the hip flexion here. Okay. So just, just going back to this, uh, She's still from picture left to the picture on the right. Here's, remember, here's her, the right picture on the right is her peak, right? That's her peak because remember, we cannot see the two anymore on that, on that, um, on those shorts of hers. The two are completely basically eliminated. It's, it's gone, right? The two we can't see. So we know that that 
from the pictures and the images we talked about just just a little, just you know a minute or two ago, that's her peak. We can't see the two anymore. Um, but on the picture on the left, we can still see her too. So we know that there's still a little bit of rise that's going to come from that hip, um, that hip flexion in order to get her, uh, in order for that momentum to continue to carry her through for the power that she's created. Okay, so if we look at uh, this concentric contraction shortening of the muscle from origin to insertion. So if we, here's first image, right? This is after she struck the ball. Here's her momentum swing phase as she swings through. Obviously, we said before, still see the two. We still see the two. We don't see the two. Now we see the two again. And now she's down for the landing. So if we were to draw If we were to draw a picture, let me just go back to the slideshow. Or not a picture, but if we were to draw lines, which I won't do, but if we were to draw lines, we would see the hamstring muscle is longer here. It's a bit shorter. Then it's even shorter. And then even here, this is her landing. We won't generate that. But she still has to have good, stable hamstring strength in order to land it without hurting herself either, right? So um, uh, the origin to insertion is longer on the hamstring, a little shorter. It's even shorter here if we were to measure. And then again, the quadricep uh, length is different as well. Okay, it's different as well. Um, shorter here, a little bit longer here, um, but... Again, it's not going to be a whole bit of a difference because, right, so because the quadriceps still working, it's still working, but it's relaxing. It's still working to flex a hip, but it's relaxing to flex a knee. It's still working to flex a hip, but it's relaxing to flex a knee. So the quadricep length is not going to be a whole lot different. It, it, would, it wouldn't even pass the eyeball test like the hamstring length would on this image. And then um, here's the – Again, the follow through, we go one, two, right, hip flexion, hip flexion, then she's on her descend, right? So your five pick, your five images, one, hip flexion, knee flexion, hip flexion, knee flexion, in order to generate as much momentum as possible. Then she has, um, uh, you can't see the one again, right? That's our indicator. Can't see the, or you can't see the two again. The two's not available to see which means she's still on her ascent uh, with the momentum, with the, the power and the force to occur um, uh, appropriately. And then she's on her descent. So here's what is going to be really important moving forward, right? So next, so this week, I'm going to give you a lab. Uh, and the lab is going to be something where you're going to be stretching uh, the, the hamstrings and the quads. So the really, really big important aspect of this is to understand the quadricep stretch and, and how the quadriceps stretch really relates and correlates to the quadriceps stretch of an athlete who's performing sport. We use soccer, for example, because it's really, really easy to see that and demonstrate that. So the quadriceps stretch where you, have, you can have an, an athlete who's super flexible in the quad, you can extend the hip and you can flex the knee to where the, the heel does approximately get close to the buttock. Or somebody like such as this individual – who may not be able to get as much uh, quadricep stretch. And so you may end up just getting to 90 degrees and that's it. And then again, correlating the hamstring stretch to the hamstrings of an athlete as they progress through uh, a dynamic phase of a strike and a ball, for example, in sport performance. So we're going to go through that hamstring stretch, quadricep flexibility, and then obviously continue to review uh, how the flexion and then uh, the flexion and uh, extension of the hip looks, and then the extension and flexion of the knee looks on um, on just general schematic drawing, so that uh, you get a really good understanding of what that looks like.